Week one of NFL football is nearly over. It's in the books, and there are a lot of happy people out there, and there are a lot of people freaking out. We're going to talk about some of the biggest issues, the studs, the duds. Like this video, comment about how your week went, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 12th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for subscribing, following the show. We appreciate you. Even if you're in a place of emotional tumult. A lot of damage dealt yesterday. If there are struggles, <laughs> we're here for you. We're struggling too. The producers are here. There's the uh, the owl, and then there's the Borgogan, and then there's the guy that beat me by about 600 points this week. Judge Giamatti himself, Brooksy, feeling good about your dynasty roster? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that had a little more pep in that step there today. Yeah, I mean, he, Justin Jefferson me, Stephon Ooh. Diggs me. Ooh. His roster is it's pretty, pretty good. But we have studs and duds on the show today. And we've been, you know, we're pretty good at surveying the sentiment that is out there in the sure. fantasy football community. We got we got a finger on the pulse. Right. And that uh that sentiment is panic. <laughs> Fright. Terror. I saw it, you know, we had somebody that uh I think one of the sadder stories I saw was somebody needed five points from Dak to win yeah. one league and six from CD to win their other league. Done deal. And then Sign they oh sealed the and then they quit fantasy football. Five points from a quarterback. Yeah. It, my son played Stafford over Dak. Regretted it tremendously <laughs> after Thursday. Here's yeah. Here's the thing that is so funny is that the sentiment right now seems to be really like. A lot of worry. There were some crazy things that happened this weekend, but I am pretty sure that at least half of everyone won. That is that is but accurate. The, but it's like if you lose, it, you, you feel it ten times more than if you if you win. It's like okay, good. I got I got to win. That's that's great. It's off my. I bet. expected that. Yeah, I expected that. My team is fine. I would say yeah. I mean that that's true every single week, but it's it's just week one. But looking at the way that the guys in the first and the second round performed, I think that that's where it's weighing in. I mean, we're going to hit the studs and duds, but like McCaffrey, Henry, Eckler, Dalvin Cook, that's picks two through five right there. Uh, the, none sure. of those guys helped your team. Najee. Now, you do all the do all the wide receivers. Uh yeah, so that went uh that went pretty good. We got Jefferson, Cooper, Cooper Cup, Cup, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Stephon Devon Diggs, Devonte Adams. So yeah, that they, oh, score man. score one for the wideouts in week one. Yeah, big time. We we as always. I mean, if you're new to the show, this will be new to you. But every single week during the year, we like to react with what we call Monday Pun Day. We put the call out on Twitter. So we this is how we get the wiggles out. And um, I we had over a thousand uh, submissions. Uh, I'm not going to claim that I got all the best ones. That's for sure. But there's some gems in here. Ninety eight point four percent were negative. So you feel you feel the losses <laughs> more than you feel the wins. Uh, let's uh, let's do it. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes. I'll begin here with uh, a name you mentioned, uh, Christian McCaffrey. Oh, how about? C.D. Lame. Oh, nice and cold. <laughs> cold commit. That's the best we have for That's him. That's what we've got. Jahan Hotson. Oh, right after the cold. Mm. 
Oh. Very sophisticated. Hunter Rutbro. <laughs> I like that one. This is the best one of the week. Kadarius a baloney. <laughs> Cordero Statterson. Are uh, you done myself? <laughs> Very nice. Alan Sobinson. And Error Rogers. <laughs> I am Error. Error Rogers. Yeah, that was uh that was no no bueno. Although he, he really should have had a long touchdown pass. Yeah. That was not on him. Nope. Nope. Uh, Wait, you don't think it was on him when he perfectly placed the ball right in the wide receiver's hands wide <laughs> open? <laughs> there was, so if he did, the, the, Christian Watson, second round rookie pick for the Green Bay Packers, uh, size speed freak, torches this defender. I think it was, it might have been the first play or the second play of, of the Green Bay offense. He's running down the field wide open. Aaron Rodgers. Dare I say an elementary catch. Yeah. It just, I mean, a little bit of an over-the-shoulder catch. We're perfectly placed, drops it. And <laughs> we were talking about in the studio, like, you just you just keep running. At that point, you don't slow down. Right out of the you stadium. Just, you run. You go right in the tunnel, grab an oobs, and just, just head on back to Green <laughs> grab Bay. Grab an oobs. And you're, you're, you know, I, I know what's going on with this, Rodgers. I'm out. You're, your ride is here, Christian Watson. <laughs> Uh, jointhefoot.com. That is our fantasy football community. Nearly 30,000 strong. An extra weekly show. So you get a bonus podcast. You get a bunch of premium in season perks. Uh, those are things like the Stream Finder tool. You get the consistency tools, which we call the weekly snapshot. And so you get to see how players are performing over time. And uh, premium projections, a whole bunch of. Uh, just things to make your regular season a little bit better and the community. I mean, the community is the best part of it. Yeah. Uh, you can tilt together. You can <laughs> rejoice together. Absolutely. And so that's jointhefoot.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. Well, Darren Waller signed a three-year, $51 million contract extension. Oh, goo 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 -goo. And then went out and really didn't do a lot for the Raiders, but did more than a lot of tight ends did this week. Yeah. Uh, This is the big one. By the way, I I know we're talking about reaction. You know, we say react, don't overreact. We say adjust, don't overadjust. We're looking at things that you should panic on, things you should stay calm about. Uh huh. I have four things this weekend that I think you should panic about. And Four? Four. Oh, wow. So we'll talk about those uh, maybe at, towards the end of this uh, news section. I'll see if you agree with me. Okay. Because I, I could be wrong. I'll bet one of them is right here. One of them's right here. Dak Prescott going to miss six to eight weeks after breaking his thumb on Sunday night. Insult to injury, or injury to insult, I should say. The Cowboy situation is... Not good. Uh, no stud left tackle. No franchise quarterback now. No wide receiver talent, and that was on display outside of CeeDee Lamb. Uh, but they really, really wanted to feature those guys. Yes, but uh, Noah the, Brown and... The Cowboys game plan was atrocious. You have uh, Ezekiel Elliott, who's running for f- basically five a carry. You're minimizing his attempts. You're featuring these these no name wide receivers who are like Dak is completely off. He's getting rushed, and at halftime, like the Cowboys were still in the game. Like it, despite being able to do absolutely nothing on offense, yeah, what the, was it like twelve the, to? If, yeah, I think it was three? twelve to three with that final with that final field goal, and it was it was absolutely pathetic what the Cowboys offense put on display for us. So. I think it's fair to say that was one of the four things that not just Dak, but all the Cowboys offensive pieces and it's awful. uh, Maybe we'll play a game later, Kyle. Maybe you can look at some names for me. It's who would you trade CD for? Because I'm seeing those come through on Twitter. I've seen CD lamb. Would you trade him right now for Christian Kirk? Man, you know, and you do have to react here. You don't have your franchise quarterback for six to eight weeks. And when you get him back, how good is he going to be? Russell Wilson came back early wasn't great from a similar injury. So, Kyle, maybe get some names that would frighten us. Uh, I'll find him. And we'll try to entertain that later on. I mean, yeah, the, the question will be, what what are the Cowboys going to do? Do they move forward with Cooper Rush? Or yeah. there's a very handsome gentleman 
hanging he out. He would in, love to wear blue. In San Francisco, just ready to play some football. Yeah, that I, would change everything. I don't how think. How do you not? I, I, I mean, Talk about how, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yes, Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, the rumors of like, oh, should they go out and try to get him? And the reality yes, is. you have to. I, no way. You I mean, have I, to. I would not. Look at it with Dak. How was it with Dak? It was not going well. Going out and getting Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't think, is going to solve your problems here. And then you're giving up draft capital in order to do that for a short period of time. I mean, if you don't, you are saying goodbye to the season. You're saying that's goodbye the to, hard part. And if you're Mike McCarthy and you say goodbye to this season, you're probably saying goodbye to your job. To be fair, I said goodbye to their season before. <laughs> before yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yes, so. I know. I know. We know how you feel about uh, the Cowboys, but. I, f I feel like they are absolutely backed into a corner. They have to do something. Yeah, so uh, Zeke, it's not going to be good. Nope. I mean, they also lost their – who'd they Left lose? Left guard. Left guard to a high ankle sprain. Uh, we have hamstrings abounding. Uh, Chris Godwin, oh, hamstring man. injury against Dallas. was unbelievable to see him out there and looking great. And then he had this unfortunate play where he had to reach low and kind of drug his heel on the ground, and that put him out for – the rest of the game, we'll see how. And long now it Julio, takes. I mean Julio looks like a viable start because oh, God sure. was going to miss time. Julio looked pretty good. They said he was the fastest player on the team, <laughs> doing his and doing his regular Julio stuff. I mean the, uh, the you have the one bomb catch that he came down with, but his face during the catch was a was a man just just pain coursing through his entire body. He caught it, but you're like, oh oh, he's hurt. No, no, okay, yeah. he's all right. Next one. Oh, he's hurt. Oh, no, he's all right. That's just that's <laughs> it's gonna his be. whole career. <laughs> and Keenan Allen suffered a hamstring strain, was oh, man. was dominating. He was. He's four for 66 in the first, it seemed like, five minutes of the game. And then now he's going to suffer, or not suffer, he's going to go through an MRI, figure out how bad this hamstring injury is. And they are the Thursday night football game that looked like an amazing game against yeah. the Chiefs. Oh, I, I think it still will be an amazing game. It will just be an amazing game without Keenan Allen. We'll talk about... Are who, they going to consider potentially using their other wide receiver, Mike Williams? I think they'll look at it. Maybe. I don't, I don't know for sure if that... Yeah, I mean... $60 I, million dollars for, what, two targets? I think... Uh, I think two receptions, four targets, I believe, maybe. Oh, I think you oh, might be wrong to, about that. Uh -oh. Did but we get to four? Why don't you Why don't you look I'll into that? I'll bet that. But. When you're figuring that out and and trying to look at those numbers, that tells you it was a, it was a rough night for yeah. Mike Williams. Uh, Eli Mitchell exited yesterday's game with a knee injury. Here's Here's what I'm going to tell you. This was one of the four items. Okay. So players actually worth freaking out about. Dak and the Cowboys offense. Eli Mitchell. Okay. Uh, this is a sub there was a substantial brace on his injured knee. He is now coming off a season in which he had four different injuries, and in the opening game, he was looking great. Yes, he was. And then he's hurt, and he and he seems to be pretty darn hurt. So I think this is a player that you should freak out about. Do you agree? Disagree? I I tend to agree. If you if you weren't following what what happened yesterday, the the Forty ers and the Chicago Bears matchup was. Like, if you have players in that game and they didn't perform for you, I'm throwing it all completely in the garbage. Like in the, the passing game, I would agree with the, you. Uh, and even in the run game, like, the it was, it was a you, downpour. You had no grip. I mean, you could exactly. not plant your foot at all. It was pouring. Like, the field was absolutely soaked to start the game. And, yeah, it started to dry out a little bit, only for it to again downpour. And by the end of the game, the telecast, the field was so so drenched on the telecast they had to put the fake numbers up on the screen so you could even see what was happening this game i know i know justin fields came through with a couple broken plays but really other debo scored a touchdown but other than that everybody in that game was bad for fantasy but throw it out the window that game was is the, the weather was out of control. The reason I say the passing game and not the running game is not because I think that the running backs were able to do good work, but because of the split that we still saw with Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, and I'm not talking just carries, but like snaps. It was a very different snap percentage for Montgomery sure. than what we've seen for his that's, that's fair. previous but, you know several years. T. Higgins exited with a concussion, Bengals wide receiver. Najee Harris picked up a foot injury sat, uh, Sunday. He was... The team's calling it minor. I, it's just hard to know what to believe because he yeah. was in a tremendous amount of pain. Yeah. 
and then he got up and kind of limped off and didn't come back. So I wouldn't take, I would just press the hold button right here on the Najee news and see if we get more information. Jalen Warren played every single snap after Najee left. He will be on the waiver show tomorrow. Yeah, and, and worth mentioning, sorry, with, with the Eli Mitchell, Jeff Wilson was the running back who got the majority of the touches. Uh, Ty Davis Price, their third round running back drafted, was inactive. Uh, for San Francisco, Jordan Mason was active. That could have just been a, a special teams thing. It's so hard when you have a mid-game injury and a complicated depth yes. chart because, yep. you know, in Atlanta, Damian Williams got hurt. Tyler Algier wasn't active. You know, you're going to look at next week and the game plan will change. I don't know if it will change in San Francisco. It's been a while since I've seen Jeff Wilson with my eyeballs and felt like he's an advantage at the running back position. You know, sure. I had him last year. I held him all year long. He was, I know yeah. he had some fantasy production. But I'm talking eyeballs. I'm talking like making a play that made you think he deserves to be a starter. I haven't seen it. Yeah, even but do remember he was. I mean, he was hurt basically all of last year. Where what did he start the season missing about two months? Yeah, and then right into action. He just he didn't. He never looked like he was fully recovered. But that'll be that. That'll be an interesting discussion tomorrow for the waivers. I have verified it was four targets. Oh, congrats. Thank oh, you. for Mike Williams? For we're, Mike, we're, we're going back to that? Uh, it took me a long time. That was I, like uh, years I, ago. Uh, yeah. I couldn't believe how long that took me to so, find just a box score that had targets. So, uh, Eli Mitchell, I think, is worth freaking out about. Dak in the Cowboys offense. Yep. Um, Cam Akers was another. I Certainly. think Cam Akers is worth it. And then the last one ties in with our final bit of news here, and it's New England pass catchers. Uh, the Patriots quarterback, Mac Jones injured his back. They're giving. Uh, I think X-rays were negative, though. Did I? Did we see that? Yeah, that we had heard that that there wasn't a break, but or a fracture. The, the offense didn't look good. The pass catchers. There's a lot of them. I mean, when you have an offense where you know Jacoby Myers, you know Devontae Parker had one catch. Hunter Henry's catching the ball. Johnny Smith's catching the ball. Um, you have just a lot of pass catchers in an offense that didn't look good. I'm willing to. Like, do you think it's worth freaking out about any of them? I mean, you didn't probably have a big investment on any the, of them. The pass catchers, your investment was not large. Other, Jacoby Myers looked great. Like, he had a couple of flash plays. Um, and he's probably the only one you're interested in. The split of the running backs of, of Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, and Ty Montgomery was, <laughs> I mean, the like the snap – the snap count uh, for I, Harris, do you have it? Yeah, I've got some snaps and routes Let's here. Go. Damian Harris had 22 snaps, 11 routes. Ty Montgomery had 20 snaps, 11 routes. Ramondre Stevenson had 14 snaps, 5 routes. This is a three-headed committee, yeah. at least it was week one, for an offense that looks like it is majorly struggling. That was the drumbeat all through training camp, then in preseason, then in week one. I'm terrified of all Patriots uh, yeah. receivers, running backs. Like, I just... I think that that is – the vibes are bad, and I don't see how Joe Judge and Matt Patricia fix it because they're not the right <laughs> because men for Judge, the job. Yeah. It's easier when you have a, a veteran, trustworthy quarterback to make a transition in a position like that. Like, I wouldn't have been worried if Brady's the quarterback and you lose Josh McDaniels, but this situation seems like a problem, and it – you know, Buffalo's a better team than them. And you have to keep up in this division, it seems. Like Miami, you're going to have to keep up with them. Buffalo, you're going to have to keep up with them. So I'm, it's not beyond Bill Belichick to adjust and fix that problem, but it didn't look good in week one. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. It's hard to believe, but there were players that played well Oh, uh, trust in me. week one. I know. <laughs> you played against them. Yeah. Players with four targets, like Mike Williams. <laughs> uh, no, Patrick Mahomes was at the top of the list. Oh, yeah, I played against him. 30 for 39, 360, and five. And um, I, I heard a stat this morning. The Kansas City Chiefs had 66 offensive snaps. They had 33 first downs. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what you're going to get from that Cardinals D. Yeah. Um, it, it was especially injured right now, but the secondary is absolutely non-existent, and the pass rush is gone. There was a 0% pressure rate 
on Patrick Mahomes. They a zero, a zero percent. Yeah, you, and they blitzed almost the whole day and got nowhere. Yeah, huh. no JJ Watt, no starting cornerback, no pressure, no Chandler Jones, no chance. Patrick Mahomes five touchdowns had no he had no issue distributing the ball. Two receiving touchdowns for Clyde edwards alaire Juju caught some passes. Mm -hmm. uh, MVS. Sky Moore got involved. Travis Kelsey was dominant. Isaiah Pacheco got in in garbage time and dominated. He did. I mean, he it dominated was... dominated that garbage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's garbage disposal. Oh, the garbage man <laughs> Grind it up. Josh Allen was great. Oh, yeah. Played again that against him, too. Yeah. Uh, jo uh, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz was very good, and if you... I, I mean, I look, I'm embarrassed to say this, so I'm going to say it quietly. Okay. If you lost Dak, yeah. Wins is actually one of the guys you're going to have to look at. Yeah, you, uh, you definitely are. Against Detroit next week is a great matchup. Um, we saw that with another stud this week in Jalen Hurts, who, my goodness, was he robbed of having a number one style you know, it being the number one quarterback overall, because he was already great. He was a top five uh, quarterback this week, 90 rushing yards. He didn't have a passing touchdown. No, that's kind of his style. But what's crazy yeah. is they, Boston Scott, Miles yeah. Sanders, and Kenneth, uh, Gainwell. and Kenneth Gainwell all had rushing touchdowns. It just so happened to be after like a wide receiver or his own rushing attempt yep. went down at the one. It was like, oh, no, it's going to happen again. Real, real quick back to Carson Wentz. So, I mean, number one. It was a very uh, Winstonian stat line here of, of 300 passing yards, four touchdowns because of the two terrible interceptions, uh, which he maybe he'll be able to do this all year. The wide receiver core for Washington, for the Manders, man, with, we already knew that Terry McLaurin was a top-tier player. You had great hopes for Jahan Dotson, and you can't really have a much better uh, rookie debut for, uh, for, for Dotson. And then Curtis flash from the past last year's big free agent wide receiver acquisition. Curtis Samuel was there. He played and he played great. Yeah. And Gibson got involved in the passing game too. So it was, you know, from an offensive perspective, it was as good as it gets for Carson Wentz and company and a nice matchup next week. First Washington quarterback with four passing touchdowns since 2015. That's seven years. That's too many. Yep. Uh, Jalen Hurts was good. Uh, he has Minnesota next week. Justin Herbert looked uh, every bit as looks, Justin Herberty looks studly. Lamar Jackson. Uh, it was a slow start, but it all worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. Mariota is another name worth mentioning. Yeah, if you're in Dak panic. Yeah, the the twelve carries, seventy two rushing and yards. designed runs. I mean, this is we uh, we had mentioned this during his his player breakdown of, or. Uh, last week during the, the 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 matchup was I'm not playing Mariota this week. I do not have the courage to play him against the the Saints, and you know he's a just a stopgap quarterback. But he has the the cheat code, the rushing floor, and it was on full display. And you, I would have some confidence that streaming him is is okay. Now against the Rams, who just got their butts whooped. Maybe in you, Los Angeles. Maybe you want to look somewhere else, but moving forward, Mariota will be a streaming candidate, and he will throw the ball a little bit more. They were in a very positive game script despite losing. Sure, for the entire game. Uh, we'll take a quick break and come back with a very, very impressive running back. Back into the studs. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I was completely convinced in just one game of the return of Saquon Barkley against Tennessee, 18 for 164, a rushing touchdown, and really the play where he got outside Oh man! and tiptoed the sideline, the speed that he got to the outside, the way he was able to maintain that balance and, and then turn on the Jets – it seems like vintage Saquon, at least in one game. It is 100% vintage Saquon. He is back to pre-injury style. That was the question that everyone had to wrestle with. Is you know For the what, undefeated Giants. Uh, <laughs> Who we'll beat Tennessee that's also on true. the road. Thanks to the best two-point conversion oh, can we talk I've about ever this? seen. <laughs> can we talk about this? Sure. Uh, by the way, you can go watch it on Twitter. But we had the most... 
uh, highly contested, narrow, wheel of shame, um, DraftKings battle ever. And it was a one point victory for yours truly. And the and I knew that I wasn't in contention for getting the wheel of shame, despite how close it was, because once I passed Mike, we had the same players. Yep. And so it came down to literally Jason versus Mike, a point apart. I was a point and a half apart. And and the game is about to be over, and Jason has none other than Saquon Barkley as his flex. And we, it looks like they're going to go into the end zone. They don't hand it off. They, It's a pass. Yes. They score the touchdown, and now we're going to go to overtime. Jason still has some hope. But wait. Brian Dable with those just, big Dables. Just st stones of stone. He's going to go for two and not go to overtime. Overtime, I was pretty confident I would have won if we got to overtime so long as the Giants touched the ball. And unfortunately, they went for two, so my day was going to be over in one play. I had one play, and that was it. <laughs> I'm down a point and a half to Mike. The play has to go to Saquon. For two points. And he has oh to get in. Gosh. And the play went to Saquon, yes. and he got in, baby. And that play was so up and down, it looked like they weren't going to him. They were going to him. Oh, he's going to be gonna stuffed. Get stuffed. Yep. And then he got in. It was outstanding. You should watch the video that Andy sneakily took. Yeah, and very, you should also watch the Wheel of Shame on Friday because yeah, it's very cool. Hee -hee. Very cool stuff. But Saquon looked great. 83% of snaps. So that was the highest of any running back in week one. So you had the very occasional Matt Breida coming in. Otherwise, it was Saquon. He was the engine that made the offense work. Daniel Jones looked uh, – he had—he looked like vintage Daniel Jones. You, you make some plays that you go, oh, that's a nice play. And then you make a bunch of other plays that you're like, oh, goodness gracious. But he, they got it done. They, yeah. yeah, they got you it You got to give him credit. He was, he was 17 for 21, two passing touchdowns. He did have an interception, six for 25 on the ground. This is not the, the coronation of Daniel Jones, but it's – like I think that the Giants deserve a huge amount of credit for this team going on the road, taking down last year's number one seat in the AFC. Like that's that's a humongous win for this Giants team. Jonathan Taylor, thirty one for one sixty one and one. Yeah, still good. DeAndre Swift, fifteen for one forty four and one. It is a very difficult let's talk about DeAndre Swift for a second. All right. Because he was great. He was uh, incredible between the 20s. Jim, Jamal Williams had two touchdowns in this game. So I'm happy that Swift got in. But do you, you look at this and you say, man, if DeAndre Swift got the goal line, he would be the next Christian McCaffrey. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what it feels like, but he's not going to. Uh, Jamal Williams is beloved in that locker room and for what he does on the field as well. Like it, He did score one, twice. He scored twice, and one of them was just – was an absolute monumental effort of com like the offensive line did nothing for him. He got completely he was stonewalled, completely stuffed, managed to keep his balance and bounced out and still scored the touchdown. So DeAndre Swift has a Jay Willie problem, but it's not going to stop him <laughs> from being a being, being a, like a top ten guy. Oh uh, yeah, I mean you don't want one of those. No, no, I don't want um, a Jay Willie problem at all. No, uh, all three Detroit carries inside the five went to Jamal Williams. Seven red zone touches to Swift's two. So, you know, at least Swift got to. Uh, genuinely, yep. it's like at yep. least you are rolling the dice. You may have it. But, uh, hey, how about this guy, Jason? Why don't you oh, share this news with us? Since Cordero you're Statterson <laughs> was – I mean, this is a little bit uh, unfair because Damian Williams was uh, forced out of the game early. He looked to be just playing that uh, Mike Davis role from last year. When he went out, they knew who the man was to get the job done. It was Cordero Patterson. And, and what he, really matters is he's good. Yeah. He had 120 rushing yards against the Saints who hadn't given up a 100-yard rusher in forever and it's this it's See, he it's had a old. he had a D-Willie problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But but then uh that didn't, you know, it was forced it, from the it, game. It rectified itself and moving forward we we don't know how bad the Williams injury is and Tyler Algier the rookie will be dressed but I mean, I mean, the confidence level in him right now has is, to be sky high. Currently, I'm sure he was dressed. It just, well, I, yes, yeah. yes, he was not nude on the right. sideline. You are correct, <laughs> Thank Jason. You. Thank you. Oh, do you think any rookies have ever taken that literally? Like, you're not <laughs> dressing for the game. Come on, man. Come oh, on. put some clothes on. Oh, oh, goodness. 
All right, Kareem Hunt. He just plain gets it done. Four <laughs> targets, four for 24 and a touchdown, 11 for 46 and one. I still don't know if anybody runs harder than he does in the NFL. Uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, seven for 42 on the ground, which, you know, in a game script that was so, I mean, they blew, they blew out the Cardinals. Big time. And he only had seven carries, but there was a lot of garbage time in this game. It was not a normal game script. He did catch two touchdowns, but 10 total touches. I, you know, Is there any equivocation on the good game for Clyde Edwards-Alaire? Yes, a little bit. It's important that we take – so he looked great, and he was Would the, you trade him? If I could trade him for – to someone who really believes like he's the dude, I mean, he obviously had two touchdowns and, and was involved, had a great fantasy day. I think I would try to capitalize on it. CD Lamb? I'm not looking – no. <laughs> no, I would keep Clyde edwards yeah. Um I'm not looking to trade him. What I think is important is when you watched this game, the beginning of the game was all him, and he was great, and then it was basically garbage time from the first quarter on. And you saw a, a strong mix. He only had 39% of snaps in this game, but you've got to say, well, is that because the game was out of hand and so they didn't need him? Or are they rotating drives? Like, for instance, Devin Singletary came out and looked unbelievable in the beginning of the Bills game, and then they rotated, and then the next guy came in. That one wasn't a blow, so we're more confident that that's going to be a heavy rotation for Buffalo. Here, you're hoping that it was just they gave Clyde more rest as the game got out of hand. Otherwise, you know, the utilization, even though he was great, of these three backs in heavy and McKinnon, rotation. McKinnon looked good. Yeah, he did. But they all three did. Uh, yeah. I mean, but... I, I would am, try to cash in. Mike, how about you? Would you try to cash in? I, I am... It's really tough because of the way that, that the game went. I'm, tra I'm okay trying to cash in, but, I mean, I'm, I'm swinging hard. I'm throwing a haymaker. I'm going to, like, someone who drafted Dalvin Cook and is tilting their face off right yeah, now. Yeah, and you try to take Clyde like, plus somebody and yes, go get Dalvin. Absolutely. Dalvin is my number one trade for target. I, I think that's a great idea, Mike. See if you can make that swap ski. And then that's, we have to talk about it. Uh, Jamal, uh, James Robinson. Oh, James Robinson, 11 for 66. Ach Achilles won, players won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, James Robinson, uh, this was what you hoped you would see. Unlike Cam Akers, you know that the way that James Robinson plays football is he's a very downhill runner. He, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I imagine cutting left and right, depending on top speed, probably worse for an Achilles injury uh, to come back to. And James Robinson just looked himself and burst. The thing is, is James Robinson has not been a burst type of player. He's not an explosive athlete. Obviously he is for mere humans, but amongst NFL players, that's never been his, his style. He's been a great vision, contact balance, make the right decision and, you know, chunk some yards at a time. And he looked exactly like he always looks. Now, he he played 48% of snaps to ETN's 51% of snaps. That's how it will be. Um, I don't think he will get back to the utilization of just having no. complete control, which That's is Peterson. what made him so fantasy relevant. What would you do if Jamal Williams was getting 50% of snaps? I mean, yeah, that's I mean, you, that's a pretty similar situation, right? Where where uh, you have Swift and Williams, and I think that's very very similar. At this point, I I think James Robinson would be better than Jamal Williams, but yeah, I mean he he's going to be heavily discussed on tomorrow's episode. Someone you have to pick up. He's going to be on a lot of waivers still. Uh, it, he's one of those probably fifty percent of leagues drafted him, fifty percent of leagues left him on waivers. And then uh, AJ Dillon. Yeah, man. I mean this he was. On the field, 51% of the snaps, 16 routes run, looked great in the passing game, scored a touchdown, or like, are and you, their offense was trash, the offense and was the, trash, and he was still pretty good for fantasy. Are you aware of this stat? He Let's led, hear it. He led the team in carries. Uh, he led the team in targets. He led the team in receiving yards. It's a very good sign for A.J. Dillon uh, moving forward because there will be better offensive days for the Packers probably very soon. Yeah, they play Chicago. You mean one and zero Chicago? I uh, undefeated uh, one and zero Chicago. What Hopefully, it's not raining. I was gonna say what you don't know is that rain was brought in. 
<laughs> they, they brought that in in Chicago. They knew what their advantage was going to be. They kept hearing that they weren't giving Justin Fields anything to work with. And they're like, what are you talking about? We spent all this money on the rain machine. They Well, they pump it up from below. They pump that water up. Oh, is that what it yeah, was? there's no way that that amount of water can accumulate <laughs> with mere rain. They flooded the field. They flooded the field. <laughs> And they got it done. The Bears have been practicing on flooded fields all offseason. Oh, yeah. It's a true advantage. Next week, it's not even <laughs> raining the field. Where's this water coming it's from? That's right. We have a leak. <laughs> also, can we build some more domes, yes, please? please? You guys are on dome patrol. I mean, you I, you guys should do the like governmental lobbying thing where you travel the country and you say, this is the big issue oh, facing America. Yeah, I is. Look, I'm, I heard you on Sunday Live, Mike. Oh, yeah. Because I'm not getting into the politics of the building, but... New stadiums get built, and they should be covered. If you want a, retract a retractable roof, fantastic. You should. But yeah. be able to cover your stadium. Because yeah. that game was garbage. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure these, these stadiums cost a lot of money, right? I'm sure yes. those contracts, they throw it in for free. Yeah. Just That's put, a, they throw the roof. roof the roof with comes that? with it. Yeah. Uh, Miles Sanders did get into the end zone and looks good on the ground. 13 for yeah. 96 and a touchdown. A little running back surprise for you later in your drafts. Maybe Miles is, well, you know, t 40 snaps. We knew that the matchup was going to be soups juicy for, uh, against the Detroit That's Lions. fair. That's fair. At wide receiver, there is one that oh, is oh, mighty oh. and strong. Oh, Justin oh. Jefferson, 9 for 184 and 2. I mean, he came out and he was talking about this game. And he was just literally surprised at the amount of space he had in the secondary. He thought Jair Alexander would follow him more. He, multiple times he caught the ball and thought there'd be guys around him, and there weren't. And these high-low concepts that they're running in Minnesota, at least through one game, delicious. Well, for, for Jefferson. Jefferson was so greedy yesterday. Yeah, he hurt was, Dalvin Cook, hurt Adam Thielen. There was, there was nothing for anyone else. It was all Justin Jefferson. Yeah, I mean, they share a little bit, man. That's all we're saying. And they, but they were, they were an attacking offense, and you love to see it because you never, you never got to, kind of, have Kirk Cousins put that on display. He hasn't had the, the opportunity, to put up prolific numbers, and and he may have that chance this year. Yep. Uh, it will be interesting, Jason. You said you'd target Dalvin Cook. Did you have any concern about scheming or the you know a lot of shotgun snaps for Kirk Cousins? A little different than what Dalvin Cook was used no, to. No, if it, so, they ran a lot of eleven personnel in this game, which is they didn't do um, a lot last year. But the data of Dalvin Cook running out of eleven personnel over the last several years is phenomenal. Well, Dalvin Cook didn't have a terrible game, like no, it, and he looked good. It, I mean, he was twenty carries and ninety yards. Yeah, I mean, he, he just he, didn't get in the end zone. And it was a tough over, matchup. He had over 100 total yards from scrimmage. There is no play I enjoy watching more when you have Dalvin Cook on your team than when they do that little design screen because you know Dalvin can break that, yep. and I like that that was still part of the game plan. Uh, the superstar wide receivers, let's just uh, – there are a couple I want to talk about, and the rest is like ho-hum. We know how good you are, but it's nice to see. Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams. Devontae had 17 targets, by the way, that led the wide oh, receivers. Rageous. Uh, Jamar Chase, 16 targets and dominant. Stephon Diggs, great game. We talked about that one. And A.J. Brown, 13 targets, 10 for 155. 55! And Devontae Smith had nothing. Yeah, So I can't believe that. A.J. Brown was just bigger, faster, stronger. And here's the thing about Jalen Hurts. Not a not a prolific passer. That's a fair statement. Not a prolific That's fair. Yeah. Uh, thrower of the football. Not saying he's not a good player or a good quarterback. But those players, when you have when you have the option to run for ninety yards, when you can do that, when you can flip that switch, you look at one read and mm -hmm. then you run. Mm -hmm. And so that progression of getting past AJ Brown, it did not happen because it was better to run than to move to the second read. Yeah, Smith had four targets. He had one egregious wide open drop um as as well, but it clearly does look like I mean we we've heard the narrative off season about how AJ Brown and and Jalen Hurts are very close friends and you're right about the play style of the quarterback. It's going to be the AJ Brown show here. But all three of the wide receivers that changed teams, AJ Brown, DeVonte Adams, Tyreek Hill, they were shown off as shiny new toys. And, you know, when, when you pay that much for someone, both in trade capital and then money, 
they're the centerpiece of your offense. Yeah, I don't see Tyreek Hill's name in here, but he had a very good game. Yeah, it was. I don't. He didn't make the list, but great game. Uh, Michael Thomas, eight targets. This is another one where I am not sure what to do with it. The offense struggled pretty mightily early on. Thomas had two touchdowns. Okay, he was five for fifty-seven and two. On and he was supposed to be on a limited snap count. So. I am curious where you lean with Michael Thomas. Olave looked good. Jarvis Landry was a little bit involved. This team had to come back. Their defense didn't play as well as we expected. I guess I'm just curious, would you cash in on this return? Five for 57, that's Michael Thomas type of numbers, right? That's 10 a catch. You That's what you do. Two touchdowns is probably not going to be normal. So what what do you do here? Yeah, if I had Michael Thomas, I I would be trying to trade him high because I I do think this is going to be near his peak. Seven and, for one ten for Landry. And when you yeah, he had that huge catch at the sorry, end. Sorry, Jason, go ahead. Yeah, when when you combine this game with Michael Thomas's name recognition and what he's done in the past, I think you can it's get, compelling. I think you can get something. You can get someone to bite uh, with a lot. C.D. Of, Lamb. Oh, I'd that's a, Thomas. Yeah, I th oh my Jimmy Thomas. goodness. Like, like, Moving forward? Yeah. I mean, the the offense for the Cowboys is going to be I, – I don't I know. Would, I, I would take CD. I would take I would, CD. I would not. Here's like the leaving room for what if Michael Thomas does still have it and what if the Saints are just – what if they were actually exposed? It wasn't a one-game fluke and their defense is not going to be as strong as they have been historically – and this is what they have to do. Jameis is good enough to get it done. Man, I, I for Michael Thomas. I just have a hard time believing. Like I know that the Falcons really did. I mean, this was a in division game, and they the the Falcons dominated this game. If you didn't see the whole first part of this game, yes, it looked like an easy win for the Falcons, and then they did what the Falcons do. Um, but uh, what is that? What do they do, Kyle? Yeah, Kyle, Kyle, what do they what do? Is, they're supposed to rise up. That's our phrase. They don't. That's your phrase? They don't. Well, they do early. They're rising up the, the draft board. Yeah. yeah. Then an eclipse comes along. and. But um, I just think that their, their defensive personnel, like they have too good of talent on the defense to just be an outright bad defense. So Well, and they, it's Tampa Bay next week. They were a shutdown defense yesterday. Michael Thomas could have a, a, a tougher week next week, and then the jury could be out. So, I mean, that's, that's up for opinion. I mean, sure. I, I agree that – the storyline of what if Michael Thomas is just back? I mean, this was a offensive player of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I understand that. Devin Duvernay, four for fifty four and two. We'll go. We'll find out if this is the um, week one name that you remember having a big week one and nothing else, or whether it continues for Devin Duvernay. He was talked up a lot during the offseason. Yeah, and he's fast. Yep. Jahan Dotson scored twice, three for forty and two touchdowns. But uh, I'm certainly not saying go and sell Jahan Dotson because he is a rookie, and you imagine with 88% of snaps, he will be a focal point in this offense. Sure. Yeah, and he's really good. And uh, don't forget Pity City, Mike. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's coming up on the We're screen. It's Andy. These producers just they don't Fix update the anything. Fix the freaking buttons, I man. know. I know. All three. We need all three of us in One there. One of them stick, put a sticky note on something. Here's the deal. To be fair, I did, and I copied it over there. It was labeled Pity City Mike, but it's just labeled wrong. Who labeled so, it? Probably maybe me. try it again. <laughs> maybe maybe try it again. I, and I see just if want it you to know I thought about it. It's fine, but I did it wrong. Uh, but here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Pittman, thirteen targets, nine for hundred and twenty-one, and a score. He was on the field for 98% of the snaps. He ran 98% of the routes and had a 31% target share. Matt Ryan only had eyes for Michael Pittman. This is great news for him ascending to be a true alpha wide receiver one. It was a mixed bag of reactions, though, to that offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the team. Matt Ryan didn't look good. He looked downright terrible. He looked like Carson Wentz last year. Who looked like Philip Rivers from the year before. Exactly right. Who so, looked like Jacoby Brissett from the fine. year before. And what happened is they tried to come out, just like Frank Reich said, and be a passing offense because that's the way that you are going to win a championship in today's modern NFL. And they were getting trounced. They were down like 20 to 3 to the Texans. And they're like, you know what? Let's tie this up. Let's just give, keep going. Let's give the ball to that Jonathan Taylor guy. We can't win with the passing game. And so the nice thing is it doesn't matter if he's good. 
if Pittman is going to be this level of target share routes yes. run and the participation, if he is pure the passing game, yeah, which he is, he'll be fine. He's going to be great. All right, uh, we do have to get through a few names here. Um, so tell me, do you care? Robbie Anderson had the big game, five for one or two and one. Do no, you care? Do not care. I mean, well, the eight targets is somewhat interesting, but Baker looked real bad. Amon Ra, twelve for uh, yeah eight. He, he's, Sorry, 12 targets, 8 for 64. He's going to be a target share monster. He's very good. Kelsey came out, dominated. Congratulations. Yep. Um, let me ask you, do you care about these next few names? O.J. Howard, two targets, two touchdowns. <laughs> no. No, okay, on 17% of the snaps, that's that's a week one fluke. Taysom Hill victory laps. Let us begin here. Four for 81 and a touchdown. Um I mean, you could. I mean, look, Cole Komet had no catches. David sure. Njoku had one catch. Irv Smith had no catches. You can do worse than taking a shot at a running back that pretends to be a tight end. Uh, also, you know how we talk about targets per route run being an important stat. He had a hundred percent targets per route run. No, he what? He one ran, target, he, one he, catch. He ran four routes. Oh, oh. I, I thought he had four. Oh, that was his rushing line. Yeah, he had mm. he had twenty five percent. Is still a good number. You can't stop Taysom Hill, so, Mike, he, Mike. Your favorite player. Uh, I hate it, but it worked out yesterday. I would not go to it. I would go to it. If I, I didn't have a top tier guy, I don't I don't have any problem taking a chance because you here's what you know. You're gonna have five plays a game that Taysom Hill gets to run the football. So if uh, you know you could do worse. I uh, I mean I'd rather find a I guy know you'd can, rather die. I I'm saying I'd I'd rather find a tight end who might get four targets a game over someone who's gonna get four carries a game. Yeah. I said that on purpose, Al. A running back that pretends to be a tight yeah, end. Yeah, because he was a running Because he was back. a running back that pretended to be a tight end yesterday. Yep. Gerald Everett, four targets, three for 54 and a touchdown. Like that. I'd go after Gerald Everett. I yeah. would go hard after Gerald Everett yes. with Keenan Allen's injury, and um, he just looked like another weapon. Yeah, it, he uh, he was running a lot of routes. Um, he was running good quality receiving routes. He's a talented guy with a great quarterback, and now without Keenan Allen – uh, I yeah, I mean he's wasn't yeah he's my my he was my favorite like deep target yep. and it's off to a good start and then the Muth was, oh, was Luth five for seventy five he got Luth um was he my start of the week I don't know yeah yes I think he was no we don't want to talk about your start of the week we don't we don't I mean unless you like zero for zero oh is that well we will talk about him <laughs> who was my start of the week Cole Komet was he yeah. We'll he, check that. He was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And I thought I, I probably – the reason I'm questioning is is because I probably raced to grab him as my start of the week before yeah. you two guys. Well, and look, uh, it, joke's it, on me. The, well, because we didn't know about the flood machine. When did I talk about the mute, though? Uh, during the matchup. You Every day. All day. <laughs> pretty highly of him. <laughs> and he, he, he looked really – good and can he be my retroactive start of the week sure Absolutely. i think yeah, that's yeah. i think at this point that's important yeah all right well that's good uh let's uh how how was mike's start of the week oh that just, tight end just as good how was that one okay i'm just trying to <laughs> balance it over here pooped in his big boy pants should we just start with the tight ends <laughs> yeah let's do it tight end um well it was it was rough in the tight end streets it really was. If you didn't have Travis Kelsey, I don't. Were you Were you happy? Was there anybody else you were happy with? I mean, Mark Andrews was fine, but, but single digits, right? Uh, no, the, five for fifty-two. Every yeah, everyone. I mean, that's not Andrews. Everyone sucked. Nobody played OJ Howard. OJ Howard was the right. tight end two on the week. Kyle nope. Pitts was awful. Two nobody, for nineteen. Nobody played Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was the tight end three on the week. It was Gerald Everett was tight end four, and then. Oh my goodness gracious garbage machine Zach Ertz. Um Oh the, yeah, he did. He, he was, got in. He was the tight end five. He got the <laughs> Oh the garbage. Oh man. delicious. I mean he I mean Dawson Knox was terrible. Yeah, there were there literally wasn't a, a good tight end out there that was I mean, you had Travis Kelsey, Gerald Everett, and then that's let me comfort people with Kyle Pitts. The uh peripheral numbers were very good, ran a route on seventy two percent of dropbacks. 22% target share in the offense. 74% um, of those routes was from the slaughter out wide. He was a wide receiver in this game, and this was a, a game script where they were trying to hold on, and they didn't attack enough in the second half, and that let them give the lead away. 
Hawkinson was bad. Knox was bad. Gasicki was bad. Komet was bad. Herb Smith was bad. Austin Hooper was bad. And Joku was bad. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's um, are a, you bailing on any of the late round tight ends? Yes. Here's the ones I'm concerned about, and here's the ones I'm not concerned about. I am not concerned about Cole Komet and his goose. If you, the, if you didn't see it, trust us. That game was outrageous. That was not an indication of any receiving options there. I am also not concerned about David and Joku. Uh, this was a, a, a tough game, and this level of tight ends are going to have bad outings. I am concerned with Hunter Henry. Austin Hooper, Irv Smith, and Mike Kosicki. Those guys, what you look at behind the scenes, the routes run, the snaps, the other tight ends on the field for uh, different players here, those ones I'm cutting bait on. Yep, I agree. The only one I would say uh, disagree with is I'm a little concerned about David Njoku just because I, I was not impressed with the Cleveland offense Sure, and Jacoby Brissett. You, you were talking about it during the game. You said – the ball's just coming out of his hand, and it looks slow. It does. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But he was, you know, 89% of snaps. Sure, sure. And uh, I, I think that the Carolina defense is pretty good. All right, quarterback duds. Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, Trey Lance, Joe Burrow, Tom Brady. So Brady couldn't punch it in. I think it'll be better for him. Now, losing Godwin, some variables involved there. Um but they ended up settling for field goals, and if those had turned it, I mean, they got down to the 12, the 10, the 8, and the, they couldn't get it in. The Cowboys had their offensive line problems, and the Bucks had theirs as well. I mean, they they lost Donovan Smith during the game. It was a hyperextended elbow. Is he going to miss time? We we don't know, but you could tell there was there was some discombobulation there with that line. Yeah, and I think it's going to be problems next week against the Saints as well, so sure. I'm not really – I'm I'm not looking to start Tom Brady next week. And then um Aaron Rodgers are you are you just are you waiting to see him put up a big game with the new weapons before you start him or are you willing to put him back out there? He plays Chicago. He owns Chicago. He so did he did pronounce that, didn't he? I am okay starting Aaron Rodgers and we'd feel differently if if the single pass was caught by uh, yeah. uh, by Christian Watson. That would have been 75 more yards and a touchdown and like I, I like Alan Lazard a lot um and I you could maybe you don't agree with that but but he was still planned to be the number one wide receiver yeah he was and missing was, his number one and guy. it was very late in the game that all of a sudden oh we don't have our number one guy on the field and I am not a Trey Lance truther from an NFL quarterback perspective I've been vocal about that I am willing to tell you to just kind of Chalk this first game in the weather up to we need to see more. I mean, yep. he, he made some mistakes, no question. Uh, 13 for 54 on the ground, 13 for 28 through the air. You know, I, I certainly would be concerned about and wasn't prescribing the Brandon Ayuk universe to you because it's the same thing as the Jalen Hurts situation. I think you're going to have an offense that's primary reads and then he's going to look to move after that one falls apart and I went back and watched quite a few of the plays good and bad from Trey Lance in this game and you know he he's a little gun shy in the pocket he's looking to to run around after his first read is gone and you didn't have George Kittle I know that was going to hurt in the rain but I think Lance will be fine for fantasy or at least uh you know next week against Seattle we'll get to see a lot better um we'll have an opportunity to see more yeah. right Agreed. mm -hmm. Running backs, Kyle, uh, oh, man. you are uh, on record being a big uh, no-piercer. So, Damian Pierce, how'd that go? Rex Burkhead is just a talented back at age 32. I really respect Lovey Smith for that. <laughs> yeah, Lovey Smith did some questionable things, one being Rex Burkhead, 72% of the snaps, 19 touches, 70 yards. Somebody tweeted, and I, if I remember who it was, I'd give you credit. But they said if the utilization for Damian Pierce – was the same that Rex Burkhead got, 49 snaps, 72% um, of the snaps, 19 touches, 70 yards, yep. the pass catching work. He would be the number one pickup in fantasy at the running back position. Yeah, yeah but it, nobody wants to pick up Rex Burkhead because they still feel like he should be the backup, but he's not. But he's not. And was the other questionable thing that Lovey Smith did, Andy, was it when he, oh my when he literally punted to tie the game? I am I the only one yes. that didn't yes. mind that? You're the only you're the one only person. They you, lose the game if they don't punt there. 
No, they could have picked up a first down. What are you talking about? It's fourth and one. They won't pick it up, guys. They wouldn't oh, pick that up. If you the, you what, play what yard, to wait, win the, the yard, game. Yes, but what yard line was it? Like the it, fifty. It was the there, midfield. Forty five. I, I I don't blame them for that. Wow. So I think saying, they lose the game if they go for it there, and they tied. So, but I'd rather tie than lose. I would rather lose while trying to win yeah. than try to tie because I'm afraid of picking up a hey, yard we, we of don't football. Agree. Fourth and one. Don't yeah, ever coach my team. <laughs> yeah, but four, fourth and one with questionable – you know, you don't have a hammer back there to go get that. You got Rex Burkhead. All uh, right. No. Yeah, that they, that's not true. You don't. They I do don't, have Rex Burkhead. Yeah, no, true. that is it's factual. Yeah. He's not a hammer. Alvin Kamara, nine for thirty nine. Are you worried? Uh, so I'm not worried because he's Alvin Kamara. I know it was bad, and some of the things behind the scenes look, uh, you know, like uh, he wasn't involved as much as you want. It was a super weird game against Falcons. Najee Harris last year, week one, was the running back 43. James Conner was the running back 44. Ezekiel Elliott was the running back 45. Week one just confirms all of our fears, but it's just one week. You know what I mean? Like, we can't yep. get crazy here. I'm not yep. I'm not concerned. So Trying that to applies to Eckler, Henry, Aaron Jones as well? Yeah, the, the known commodities that we go, oh, we just know these are great running backs. I'm not. I'm not very worried. No. Yeah, and I I disagree with you on the David Montgomery concerns. Uh, he saw 65 percent of the snaps out of the backfield. That's a great number. I mean, that was what Arian Foster was pulling down in Houston. Yeah, but that's not a great number for him and for what he's been seeing over his 65 percent of snaps, 17 carries in a game that isn't played in a flood. And I'm completely fine he, with. He didn't have a single game with that few of snaps last year. Just for context. Yeah, I, but I again, the the weather was a problem, and I'm going to wait and see on Montgomery. I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to wait and see, but the it it is it. This is a more this is a time show that David Montgomery has never seen, and he has while he's good. Like I, I'm not trying to take away from the talent of David Montgomery, but he was like James Robinson. He was the only show in town for Chicago, and now Khalil Herbert has a role. Yeah, I, I'm not as concerned as you guys. That's okay. fair. Last year he was 75%, but he finished as the RB4 with a 71% snap count the year before. So uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, I, are you picking up Khalil Herbert based on 35% of the snaps in Chicago? No, no. He, he's an insurance play. He's not someone that you can start. Right. Um, Travis Etienne, four targets, two for 18, four rushes, 47 yards, eight carry or six touches is not – not what you would hope for. Nope. It seemed like he was right on the cusp on about, I don't know, six, seven plays of having a completely different game, including a touchdown drop. There was yes. there was two touchdowns he should have had. One, he was wide open running into the back corner of the end zone, and he was overthrown by a mile. And then the other was he was open and hit in the hands, and he dropped it. He <laughs> so, did fumble. Yes. But I would actually – he's on a list of players that I would target on the cheap. Because I think he will be integral to the offense in terms of, you know, just getting things done. And you could you can see the juice, like like you said, he was it felt like multiple times through that game he's about to break it. He's I going agree. to he's going to break big plays. Uh, Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert that breakdown. You know, Chase was just twelve for twenty five in the backfield. Raheem was just five for sixteen. So neither running back could do anything. What is that? Two point seven and three point one a carry. Chase did have. 63% of the snaps, four targets, and uh, you'd imagine better things on the ground from both players in the future. Yep. Yeah, the utilization was good. The production was bad against uh, New England, but they're in Baltimore next week, so it might not get better. And then Buffalo, and All then right. Cincinnati. It's a bad opening month Yeesh. of matchups. So let's talk about the wide receivers that you may or may not be panicked or frightened or worried about utilization-wise. Uh, you know, Robbie Anderson was in the studs. DJ Moore is here in the duds, six targets, three for 43. What was your reaction to that game? My reaction to that game was the it's the exact same. I was like, wait, is that Sam Darnold? <laughs> yeah. It's the same Panthers uh, as last year. Um, DJ Moore is going to have his good Murder. games. Yeah. Uh, he'll have his good games like he did last year, and he will disappear a ton like he did last year. He's going to be someone that, you know, I'm I'm glad after the trade I moved DJ Moore up 
because I thought, man, this is the best quarterback he's had. And then I remembered the tip from last year of like, these mediocre quarterbacks do not fix the wide receiver problems. I moved him back down. I don't have a lot of DJ Moore, but I think this is just going to be exactly what you've seen the last few years. The, the real concern is why didn't they give the ball to Christian? I can yes. tell you why. McCap I know I have the answer. Oh, good. Ben McAdoo. Ooh. <laughs> so you're concerned going forward then? I'm concerned for this offense. He's so yeah. good. He touches the ball. It's like, oh, man, give it to that yeah. guy. I'm not who's concerned just about dominating. McCaffrey. No. no. I'm concerned about DJ Moore, Baker Mayfield, the entire offense. McCaffrey will be better because they they can't be that dumb. Um, CD Lamb. Or can they? CD Lamb had 11 targets. He only caught two of them. Yeah, woof. So we're going to play that game real quick. Okay. Here's some names. Would you trade CD Lamb for Kareem Hunt? No. Uh, no. James Robinson. No. No. Chase Edmonds. No. No. Okay. Uh, at the wide receiver position, these but, ones are a lot harder. Christian Kirk. He was really good. I don't. We didn't mention him in the studs. We probably should have with the, what do you have, man. 12 targets? 110 yards. Yeah, 12 targets, seven catches, I think. Yeah. Uh, Christian am, Kirk or CeeDee Lamb with that situation? I'm going to stick with CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, I'll go CD. I'll probably give him another week. Amon Ra? I'll take St. Brown. Jason's oh my face. goodness! If you could like, watch this, yeah, that one's easy for me. Oh man, I don't want to over. I think I would do it for one. Kirk too. Actually, I don't blame you. I would I, not do it for Juju. Juju was not a focal point. He had a he had an okay game, but he was not a focal point. They nine different receivers caught a pass in yep. Kansas City. It's going to be very spread out. And then Jahan Dotson, I wouldn't do it for Jahan no, Dotson. No, I I. I think I would do it for Amon Ra. No, no, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep CD <laughs> for all of them. You're gonna gonna, keep him for all. I'm gonna keep him right now. I would not gonna sacrifice the lamb. I'm not gonna sacrifice oh, the lamb. Yeah, I'm still concerned, but he is the only dude. He is it, and I do think Kellen Moore is a good offensive coordinator. And Wasn't they will yesterday. Have to, well, no, I mean, that, look, if there's a good pass rush coming up against this offensive line that's trashed, it, the Cowboys aren't gonna be able to do anything. Uh, they have a really hard, like, two weeks, but they have one of the easiest schedules in the NFL this year. There will be brighter days ahead. The problem is the quarterback situation. You've got... I like 11 targets. Yeah, but I like 11 Dak targets a whole lot I know. better. I know. Man. Most oh. of those were Dak. I know. I'm. I, this is... <laughs> CeeDee Lamb is brutal. If you have CeeDee Lamb, I've got him in uh, most of my dynasty leagues. It, it's... At least but, it's dynasty where like long term value he's still good, but this year what's mercy. crazy is like Michael Gallup will come back probably in a couple of weeks. Jalen Tolbert didn't dress. I mean he put clothes on, but he didn't dress. And so you will have a few more weapons. I it's hard not to panic in that one. That's one of the few that yes. I think is worthy of it because you need a good quarterback <laughs> to be able to really put up prolific weeks. Yeah, I think CD's gonna have plenty of five for sixty one. That's gonna happen. Can he score enough? I don't know. Mike Williams, I'm not worried, but are you worried? I mean, four targets, but he played 92% of snaps, 91% of routes run. I'm not worried uh, at all. Mike Williams has never been touted as a consistent player. He's not a guy that's going to go out there and have 100 receptions and an even keel. That's the Keenan Allen Go role. trade for him. Mike Will absolutely. Uh, Mike Williams is still currently now with Keenan Allen he's the best wide receiver for Justin Herbert it was a terrible game and you'll have a couple more terrible games along the way but no I'm not worried about Mike you're Williams. not starting DeAndre Carter over him no I'm not no. starting DeAndre Carter over him. uh Thielen three for 36 Devontae Smith zero for zero Darnell Mooney one for eight in the in the Noah's flood yes Amari Cooper three for 17 that is bad 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 playing I mean they were he was. They were playing from ahead. I mean, he was wide open for a deep touchdown when he got clotheslined by the defender. <laughs> that's true. Um, who caught up for and just pass interference? Yeah, but he shouldn't have caught up because Jacoby should have put it in his. That's fair. You I, know, I, Jacoby's a problem. Yeah, I, this this is just confirming my priors on Amari Cooper. Hey, so, where's the knee? So I'm I I'm out on Cooper. All right, um, Robert Woods did nothing, and honestly. The, the utilization of Robert Woods in this game was – was uh, it's number five on my list of things to be worried about. He he doesn't seem like – he doesn't have the athleticism to win you a week. And then Kyle Phillips had nine targets, six catches. Traylon Burks involved. It seems like Robert Woods – you know, what, three different tight ends? 
yeah. involved. And Burks was Burks was involved and not on the field a ton. Like his Burks's snaps are are gonna go up. It was a very promising start for Burks. Kadarius Tony. What are they doing? I, I really, what are they doing? I do really <laughs> say it again. Well, like, I mean, I dapped him up at the top of the show, so I think it is very fair here to say, what are you doing? Kadarius Tony did not play. Uh, twelve percent of the snaps. He ran did three he, rounds. I thought, he ha- I thought we saw him with the ball in his hand. Yes, he had yeah. one carry. Oh, a carry. Yeah, one. And you know what? It was awesome. It, you're like, oh yeah, there's Kadarius Tony. Could have just been recovering from soft tissue issues. That is the Maybe. hope. The hope is that you know when you only run a guy three routes and hand the ball off two times to him, you are getting him some work back on the field. I think brighter days are ahead for Kadarius Tony. It just seems like it might be a month from now, not next week. Scary. Yes. Uh, Randall Cobb, Sammy Watkins. <laughs> that was my official analysis. Yeah, and that's, I mean, moving forward, that's what you can do for them. Uh, I think that's it with the duds. Yeah. All right. Anything else you need to get off your chest? I need 20 points tonight. Follow along with me, Foot Clan. I need 20 from Melvin Gordon. I see uh, Al Borland looking at me over there. Now, last time we played each other in the playoffs, it was a nail-biter, right? It was. Monday night game, yep. right? So uh, Melvin needs 20 tonight. I need um, the super stack of Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton to score fewer than 30. So I... Uh Uh-oh. Yep. (laughs) And Mike, what do you need tonight? I need the Denver DST to have a score. That seems doable. I I need a... Yeah, I need a... Pick six or a fumble you, you recovery. You could do that. It's it's possible, but Gino. But but you don't. I, hey, Gino. you don't want to go into Monday down eleven points and your defense is your last. No, time. let's have the defense have multiple scores and keep that out of Russ's hands. Huh? Okay. Huh? Okay. All right. Let's go, team. High five that one, team Denver defense. Yeah, but how does Melvin Gordon get twenty? Don't care. Hey, well, when they're up, <laughs> yo, this works for all of us. Let's just run the ball, Denver. All right. Run the ball. All right. Well, that's what we've got going on for League of Record uh, as we try to get off the schneid in week one. I think we did it. I think we got through it. We Check did. out the community. Join the foot.com. Back you know what? with. I feel a lot better. Waivers tomorrow, Mike. More discussions, debates, and panic. On the way. A lot of juicy players. On Good the luck tonight, wireless. Foot Clan. Yeah, we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.